So I've been asked questions on my channel comments about isolation transformers and kind of how to use them. The first thing that everybody thinks that you can do with these things is hook them up to their oscilloscope and isolate their oscilloscope from their circuit and think that they're going to be safe. That is the wrong idea. You do not want to float your oscilloscope. That is just bad news. See what happens is your oscilloscope BNC cables your BNC connectors are connected together. If you put a, a, a con did a continuity between those two terminals, they would be connected, and they'd also be connected to your earth ground. So, floating your scope is not a good idea because you do not want to you do not want to disconnect that BNC from the earth ground. If you do that and you hook up to another circuit that, let's just say. You know your BNC connector, I mean your uh, your meter, yeah meter, your um, uh, oscilloscope probe here, the can, the uh, alligator clip. This is ground potential to your your house mains, all right. So if you float your oscilloscope and you put this on something in your circuit that's hundreds of volts, 30 volts, I don't I don't care what it is, you know DC plus uh, 50 volts DC that is now going to be your reference in your scope and now what happens is you can you can go and try and disconnect it and if you're leaning on something metal and you touch that BNC you're going to get electrocuted uh, so it's never a good idea to float your scope so what you do what do you do with an isolation transformer is you don't float the scope you float the device under test and these can be dangerous as well but less dangerous if you use them properly they some of them have to be tech modified they most most of them do not come modified to work for tech use now what do I mean by tech use so your trans your this isolation transformer basically looks like this you have 120 volts coming in here this is your neutral this is your line and this is your ground on your on your plug and you'll have the same out here which would be actually it doesn't really matter there's really no neutral just call it line and line L1 L2 okay so what happens is your ground is still attached to the ground on the secondary side of this transformer through the receptacle all right some isolators actually bond this side of the secondary winding to ground that is even worse when you're trying to use it as a tech isolation transformer you want you definitely want to remove that okay so what is going to happen when it if you just get it and it's it's like this which is actually should work fine as long as you do not use the ground on the um, outlets okay because you are still electrically isolated here and as long as you do not use the third pin on your uh, outlet on the isolator you should be fine so <clears throat> but the only problem with this is is they don't tell you how they're wired and you kinda have to figure it out you have to find if your ground is bonded to the neutral uh, socket and you can do that with a continuity check between the ground and the sockets if you don't have a continuity check you're probably good so you're isolated between your transformer coil on the secondary side but you're still not isolated to ground so if you plug something in that's two prong you're isolated if you plug something in that's three prong you're not isolated so here's an example of a isolator which is good this is a 500 watt isolator and you can get these on Amazon for about 120 bucks this here already has the secondary wine and completely isolated from the uh, from the ground there's no bond there's no there's no bond wire there 
but it does have the ground that transfers from here at the line side to the secondary side outlets so you would open this up just to verify that and let's let's do it let's see what it does the ground wire comes in from the plug and goes to the chassis of the transformer and it just terminates there so you think to yourself oh that's already isolated the ground is not connected to any of the sockets and you can say to yourself and, and look at the uh, the sockets themselves and you'll see there's no wires on the ground terminals but I'm telling you right now that those sockets are grounded because this screw right here and this screw holding the actual receptacle in is a is connected to that ground pin so that is why they didn't hook up the wire because they're grounding this through the chassis so these three screws this um, grounding part of the plug is all connected together with that screw so there's no way to truly isolate the ground on the secondary winding without serious modification to the receptacles so what you can do is you can get one of those ground lifting um, plug adapters that disconnect the ground from the socket and you just basically have an adapter that plugs in here and you don't hook up the ground terminal now I strongly suggest that you, you you understand how this all works before you go and do this and work on this stuff but you know you are doing this at your own risk obviously but it's much safer to float your device under test than it is to float your oscilloscope so what happens is if you float your device under test now you have just these two terminals let's just forget about the ground pretend it's not there don't even use it whatever you got if you have a computer power supply and you're gonna plug this in either clip the ground or remove it or use one of those ground lifting uh, adapters because once you plug something three pronged into this device your chassis of your device under test is now referenced to earth ground and that's what you not you do not want to do when you're trying to float a device under test so we come back to here and we, 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 we want to eliminate this now I mean we are defeating safety purposes but this is a tech transform this is a tech isolation isolation transformer and what we want to do is we want to just float this winding on the secondary side so we're gonna hook L1 and L2 I shouldn't even call it L2 just just I just did that for there's no neutral but it's not it's not two different um, phases or anything so you have your 120 volts coming to these two pins so if you have something that you're trying to power that's 120 volts let's just say it's a stereo now that you have your 120 volts going in through the two prong plug so now nothing is referenced to ground and nothing is referenced to your mains so you can technically grab a hot wire well, I wouldn't suggest doing this, but if you accidentally touched a hot wire with your finger, you might feel a little tingle, but you're not going to get electrocuted because there's no path to ground. And also, when you hook up your oscilloscope that is earth grounded, and you hook up this alligator clip to anywhere in the circuit, which is okay, but now that becomes earth ground referenced so you just have to be careful once you hook up your oscilloscope probe um, so once that becomes earth ground reference you cannot use another channel on your oscilloscope somewhere else in the circuit you have to have it the alligator clips the you know, ground reference connected to the same spot or else you're going to blow up your oscilloscope or or do something it's going to do something evil to the circuit so um yeah, so it adds a little bit of safety for you, adds a little bit of safety for your circuit, and um, you know if if that helps out, uh, it's going to be a beneficial thing for you. So I, I hope this kind of helps people understand how to use isolation transformers 
I know I just kind of did a quick video on this there are other videos out there on this and I may um, add links in the description that go into this a little bit more deeper so if you want to look into this a little bit more for the, if you didn't quite understand what I'm trying to tell you so check out for that alright guys have a nice day we'll see you in the next video